Hi, this is Abhijit and you are watching AB Sri Sukul. Do like, comment, share and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any video from AB Study Circle. In this video, we are discussing about a question that has been asked in CS video university exam in 2017. The question is like this. Air flows in a compressor at a rate of 0.7 kg per second. The air enters at a velocity 5 meter per second, 100 kilopascal pressure, 0.85 meter cube per kg volume and leaves at 3 meter per second, 700 kilopascal and 0.17 meter cube per kg. The internal energy of air leaving is 80 kilojoule per kg greater than that of air entering. The cooling water in the compressor jacket absorb heat from the air at 60 kilowatt. Determine the work input to the compressor and the ratio of inlet pipe diameter to the outlet pipe diameter. It's a very typical question. So let's start with the given values. Okay. So given. Right. So we have M dot that is mass flow rate as 0.7 kg per second. Okay. We have C1 as 5 meter per second. Okay. We have pressure P1 as 100 kilopascal. We have specific volume V1, small V1 as 0.85 meter cube per kg. Right? Now, at the leaving, we have C2 as 3 meter per second, P2, the pressure as 700 kilopascal and specific volume as 0.17 meter cube per kg. Okay. Also, the question says that the internal energy of air leaving is 80 kilojoule per kg greater than that of air entering which means if we it is in specific terms right so small u2 is 80 plus u1 okay this implies that u2 minus u1 is 80 kilojoule per kg okay this we got right also says that the cooling water in the compressor jacket absorb heat from the air that is being compressed in the compressor at 60 kilowatt means your QCV is minus 60 kilowatt minus because the heat is rejected from the air which is absorbed by the cooling water okay and what we have to find out to find to find we have to find out WCV okay and D1 by D2 okay so there is nothing mentioned about the change in potential energy so we assume we assume Z1 equal to Z2 means change in potential energy is negligible and we can neglect it okay so we know h1 plus c1 square by 2 plus small qcv is equal to h2 plus c2 square by 2 plus WCV these are in specific terms and this is your steady flow energy equation assuming Z1 equal to Z2 okay now for Q1 
kilowatt calculation it can be converted into m dot h1 plus m dot c1 square by 2000 plus qcv as it is in already in kilowatt condition so m dot h2 plus m dot c2 square by 2000 and its w cv so everything is now in kilowatt terms now we see uh, h right the h is enthalpy and enthalpy can be written as we know h can be written as u plus pv okay so our equation changes to m dot u1 plus p1 v1 plus m dot c1 square by 2000 plus qcv is equal to m dot u2 plus p2 v2 plus m dot c2 square by 2000 okay plus wcv okay we had this now i will be uh, opening this bracket and taking this m dot u1 to this side and then we take out m dot as common then uh, we will solve the question further right so i am opening this back first and taking this to this side so m dot p1 v1 plus m dot c1 square by 2000 plus qcv is equal to m dot u2 minus u1 plus m dot your p2 v2 plus m dot c2 square by 2000 plus w c v okay see uh, p1 is given in the question uh, v1 is given in the question m dot we know c1 is also given qcv is given in the question uh, u2 minus u1 that is 80 kilojoule per kg is given and everything else is given so we will just put the given values in the formula and then we will calculate the unknown that is wcv so it will be 0.7 into 100 into 0.85 plus m dot is 0.7 c1 is 5 so 5 square by 2000 minus 60 is equal to m dot 0.7 into 80 right plus m dot again 0.7 into 700 into v2 is 0.17 right we have m dot as 0.7 c2 as 3 meter per second right so this and this is your unknown which we have to find out wcv so we got this right so now your wcv is minus 140 kilowatt so we have just calculated this and we got this unknown as minus 140 kilowatt this is your answer to the first part of the question for the next part we know a1 c1 by v1 is equal to a2 c2 by v2 it is what continuity equation right so from here we can get a1 by a2 as 
v1 into c2 by v2 into c1 which comes as 3 we are just putting the values of this so we got pi by 4 d1 square by pi by 4 d2 square is equal to 3 so from here we can get d1 by d2 as 1.73 as the ratio and this is your answer to the second part of the question.